वेलकम टू द वीडियो लेक्चर्स ऑन द सब्जेक्ट ऑफ एप्लॉड थर्मोडायनामिक्स फॉर द पुणे यूनिवर्सिटी सो टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू सी द यूनिट नंबर फाइव व्हिच इज हैविंग द सिलेबस ऑफ इंजिन सिस्टम्स एंड इमिशंस फ्रॉम द इंजिन्स सो लेट सी दैट कंटेंट्स ऑफ द पुणे यूनिवर्सिटी फॉर द सब्जेक्ट एप्लॉड थर्मोडायनामिक्स ऑफ यूनिट फाइव सो इट इज हैविंग the different engine systems and in that it consists cooling system lubrication system ignition system governing system and starting system apart from that the second part is there that is what uh, the engine emissions and their norms so today we are going to see the first lecture on the engine systems and in this we will the engine support systems so we are having the different types of the engine support systems what are those so we are having the cooling system then we are having the lubrication system we are having ignition system we are having the governing system and the starting system so these are the major systems with which the engine will work properly and it is essential systems for engine working so see today's lecture in that inlet and exhaust system is also there so today we are going to see the engine cooling systems only and particularly this lecture is focusing on what is the need of the engine cooling system for the engine so let us see the background that is why we need the cooling system actually so see that is need of engine cooling so why we need the cooling in engine of engine cooling so for that purpose we should understand that that whatever the fuel energy we are supplying to the engine it is converted the into the heat first and then that heat is converted into the useful mechanical energy that we are calling it as a brake power which we are getting at the output shaft now apart from that heat energy some of energy goes lost in the exhaust gases some go goes to the atmosphere and some may be going to the different components of the engine so see you can see that with this graph you can see that near about 25 to 30% we can get the brake power while 30 to 35% goes to the exhaust gases while 10 to 15% goes to the atmosphere that is why convection and radiation from the surface engine surface while in that the pumping losses is also included while remaining 25 to 30 percent is goes to the heat goes to the different components of the engine that is wall piston then cylinder we are having the cylinder wall so all these components are getting this in, in heat so it is essential to see that these components are receiving this heat so due to that there is definitely rise in the temperatures of the different compounds of the engine so you can see that what is the variation in the temperatures of the engine so during the different strokes it is varying but when you you are having the combustion process then in during that process combustion process you can see that temperature of the gases inside the cylinder may reach near about 2500 degree centigrade which is very high and due to this temperature the different components of the engines are gets heated or that will receive the heat and due to which the temperature of the different components will rise so this diagram is indicating you the mean or average temperature of different components inside the engine so you can see that generally we will have the cylinder wall temperature it is near about 200 to 250 degree centigrade exhaust wall may be 650 degree centigrade spark plug is the 600 degree centigrade see exhaust wall is the most hot component in the engine while piston may be having near about 300 degree centigrade temperature 
and piston rings are having 220 degree centigrade temperature now see if this type of the very huge and high temperatures are there then these components may be having the expansion and it may creates the thermal stresses in it that uneven expansion may causes the thermal stresses and due to this uneven expansion of the components due to the heating the engine components may get seized and it may not move also so engine may be seized and that may be a dangerous thing so this is the first point that we should take in mind that when the temperature of the components will increase the thermal stresses may occur and that may be causing the damage of the different components okay again another point is there that we are using the lubricating oil and that lubricating oil is working at particular temperature now if we will not have that particular temperature and if we exceed the temperature the lubricating oil will lose their properties particularly viscosity and its sealing property gets low lost and due to which that oil may get burn also so film we will not get so due to which the friction may be increase so these are the points that are requiring the cooling now see again there are different different issues that we have to see first that first is see, we have to see that if the engine gets overheated so what will happen with that that it will damage the engine components due to the thermal stresses as i have discussed then second may be the lubrication system may fail and it will increase the friction losses so as the friction losses will increase it will loss the power and it will require the more fuel energy that is loss of economy so lubrication system sh should not be fail so th again third is there that is what there will be uneven expansion of the components due to the thermal we can say that thermal stresses which may seize the engine which may damage the engine so this and last point is there that see we have discussed the combustion processes in the engine si engine particularly so as the temperature inside the cylinder is goes on increasing the knocking tendency of the engine will increase and as there is a knocking tendency the power will be lost as well as the economy will be less so we will require the more fuel so these are the major four points that are causing due to the overing overheating of the engine so we have to see that so we have to cool the engine we have to cool the engine by any means but see if we cool the engine and that engine becomes very cold then again there are different issues which may arise so let us see that also so see if we do the excessive cooling of the engine then it will causes the different issues so what are those the first is, issue is that if you cool the engine excessively the engine will not start it will have the starting problem combustion process will not be started easily in ci engine it is having more difficult because we are having the starting with the compression ignition that is come with the compression only and due to the excessive cooling the engine will not start easily so that is you may have observed also then when engine is in winter season uh, diesel engines have the more difficulties for starting and that difficulties will be more if you provide the excessive cooling system so that is one issue then second is there that see when the temperature of the ins inside the cylinder will reduce then sulfur will be generating sulfur oxides and that may be create the sulfuric acid that is H2SO4 and it is in the vapor form so if if we are having the less temperature then that sulfuric acid will be condensed inside the cylinder only and that will stick to the different components of the engine particularly the piston valves and uh, cylinder valve and that may start the corrosion because it will reactive it is will re, it is very reactive and it will react with the metal and that will start the corrosion so that is a problem which may arise 
due to the excessive cooling of the engine also then another point is there that see as we are discussing that lubrication oil which we are using is changing its property with the temperature so if you are having the higher temperature it is losing its properties similarly when we are having very less temperature also its viscosity will be increased and which will cause the uh, more friction it will not work properly so that is again issue and that will increase the uh, we can say that frictional losses so these are the these are the different issues which may cause due to the excessive cooling and one more point is there that see in particularly the petrol engines that vaporization of the fuel is important as well as in diesel engine also that vaporization of the fuel is important otherwise the combustion will not be normal combustion it will be a uh, uh, abnormal combustion so that vaporization must be takes place but it will take when the certain temperature is achieved inside the combustion chamber and if you are having the excessive cooling then vaporization will not be takes place of the fuel which will loss the fuel which will not have the proper combustion as well as this fuel will stick to the walls and it will loss the power as well as it will loss the economy so these are the issues with the excessive cooling of the engine so with this points we can see that there should not be overheating of the engine or as well as there should not be excessive cooling of the engine so what we have to do so we have to provide the temperature of the engine components should be maintained at a particular range and that is we can call it as optimum range in which we will get the maximum performance as well as we can we have we will increase the engine life so this range is important so see generally we if we are seeing that at mobile engines then the temperature of the cooling water that is water jacket is there if we are using the liquid cooling system for the automobiles then that water temperature is maintained or coolant temperature instead of saying water we can say that coolant also so coolant temperature range is near about 80 to 85 or you can say that up to 90 degree centigrade only so we will maintain that range below it also it is called as a excessive cooling and above that we can say that it is a overheating of the engine so we have to maintain the temperature within that range now how to maintain it this can be achieved by having a proper cooling system to the engine and that will maintain the optimum working temperature in the different engine components so see this with this let us see now what are the functions of the engine cooling system see we we have seen that what what is the need now let us discuss that what is the function of the engine cooling system so engine cooling system should maintain the average temperature wall temperature near about 10 200 degrees centigrade 50 degrees centigrade for maximum power and smooth running of the engine so it will gives the that much uh, range of the temperature then it it is Uh, required to ensure also uh, will not allow to uh, expand the different components due to the thermal stresses as the components gets heated it should not allow to expand it and there should not be seizing so the clearance should be maintained between different parts so that is one point that you should remember then it should promote the vaporization of the fuel so fuel should be vaporized so that the proper combustion will be there and a condensation on the wall should not occur so that will save the fuel and third is there that it should provide the uh, lubricating oil at its best viscosity and prevent condensation of the harmful vapors just like h2so4 and uh, other uh, harmful acids which are formed during during the uh, 